The flat earth model is based on an azimuthal equidistant projection map centered on the North Pole, with the sun and the moon orbiting at about 5,000 km altitude. This is of course a total distortion of all we know about our surroundings. In this map the equator has a diameter of almost 63,000 km or 39,000 miles, a distance we know to be exactly 40,075 km, or 24,901 miles. But, the community of flat earthers don't have the collective brain capacity to calculate circumference from radius. Gravity is a big problem in the flat earth model. How would the pancake be able to sustain its shape in face of gravitational pull to crumble it into a ball? So of course the claim is simply, gravity don't exist. To explain the tendency objects have to fall they have launched a number of alternatives. Of course all quite laughable explanations. But let us analyze these one at a time. The candidates are. Magnetism. Or electromagnetism. Static electricity. And buoyancy. Magnetism. In the case of magnetism, wouldn't a magnet fall at a different rate than an object that is not magnetic? Most things are not magnetic. Doesn't trees fall in the woods? Or, would not magnets of different polarity fall at different rates? Or at least, wouldn't magnets always fall the same way around? Earth's magnetic field is around 0.6 Gauss. An MRI scanner can be up to 30,000 Gauss. I've been to an MRI examination, and I don't recall gravity being suspended. Not even the most powerful electromagnet we have, at 440,000 Gauss, seem to pose any problem for gravity. I'm sorry, but if you subscribe to this nonsense you simply haven't been thinking this through. Static electricity. When it comes to static electricity one would expect an object that is electrically grounded to fall at a different rate. Like an airship would just fall to the ground once it is grounded for lightning protection. Or, what if we negatively charge one object, wouldn't it just keep floating, like an airship? True enough. The Earth's atmosphere is charged at around 100 volts per meter, but a charge will not do anything until there is some electrical current flowing. The current flow in the atmosphere is so minuscule it has no meaningful effect at all. Besides, the charge in the atmosphere fluctuate daily, with an absolute minimum around 3 a.m. I cannot imagine anyone ever having observed things falling slower at night, though it would be fun if we could make out when a recording was made based on the speed objects are falling. This is the kind of moronic make it up as you go along attitude that is the hallmark of all of this. Sorry, but static electricity won't cut it. Buoyancy. This is where the flat earth idiots really shines. These are really just a bunch of rambling half wits with no concept of how physics work. I can in all honesty see how you can make this mistake, if you are a child, but to claim you have done your research and then crawl down this rabbit hole of ignorance and stupidity is just laughable. This often involves some idiot putting a ping pong ball, or an egg in a jar of water to demonstrate buoyancy. Eggs that float in water are not fresh, so you should really throw them out. The obvious fallacy is, when you assume the ball is forcing its way up through the water. If there was no gravity, just buoyancy, the pressure in all the liquid would be uniform. The water would exert the same pressure to all sides of the ball, so where would the ball go? Up or sideways? Or maybe nowhere, you know, like a ball would behave in a liquid in zero gravity. When we introduce gravity the pressure at the bottom of the jar equals the weight of the water above. At the top of the ball the pressure is slightly lower, because there are less water above. Gravity pulls the heavier water down under the lighter ball. And since the pressure is lower above, the ball will rise. Gravity will continue to pull water down under the ball, pushing it up. If you put a much heavier ball into the jar it is the other way around. Gravity will pull the ball down, displacing the water and forcing it up. The same is true for a balloon filled with helium. 
Gravity will pull the heavier air under the balloon, pushing the balloon up. In a world without gravity there would be no higher pressure deep down in the ocean, and air pressure would be exactly the same all the way up through the atmosphere. The simple fact that air pressure decrease with altitude proves gravity, and that buoyancy is an effect of gravity. Gravity exists and we have a number of ways to observe it, and we can measure the gravitational constant by performing the Cavendish experiment. Thousands of students perform this experiment every year all over the world and have done so for decades, as this instructional movie from the 70s show. Today we have standardized and more accurate instruments to perform the experiment. But this is not a black box of magic tricks. You can use the lead balls from the apparatus and do the experiment with a torsion bar, just like the instructional film from the 70s. The Cavendish apparatus consists of two pairs of spheres, each pair forming dumbbells that have a common swivel axis. One dumbbell is suspended from a quartz fiber and is free to rotate. The second dumbbell can be swiveled so that each of its spheres is in close proximity to one of the spheres of the other dumbbell. The gravitational attraction between two sets of spheres twists the fiber, and it is the measure of this twist that allows the magnitude of the gravitational force to be calculated. The data from the demonstration can be used to calculate the universal gravitational constant, g. We still have some unanswered questions around gravity, and especially its relation to the other forces in nature, but we can observe and measure gravity. Through experiments we can also calculate the gravity of the Earth. The gravity is subject to the centrifugal force from Earth's rotation and properties in the Earth itself. The actual gravity will vary slightly around the world, but it is pretty close to 9.8 meters per second squared.